if your laptop is running at 100 degrees or maybe like 90 degrees well there's something wrong with it i don't know if you can hear this noise right now but my fans are working pretty crazy they're probably at their full speed right now and if you're running into the same issue where you notice your laptop starts to run real hot well there could be two things that you can look at there's two main components for your laptop cooling system one is your fan and another one is your heatsink if your fan is spinning and it's working fine then it's probably your thermal paste and what can happen your thermal paste can get old or if somebody didn't apply it properly then it may not transfer heat from the cpu to your heatsink properly which is going to cause it overheating and it's going to tell your computer that you need to bump up the speed of the fan which is going to cause a really lot of noise and it's still not going to cool it down properly because the thermal paste is not transferring the heat from the cpu so basically the cpu doesn't get cooled at all this is a big issue because it's going to affect the longevity of your cpu and your laptop top overall so you want to make sure you keep an eye on that i'm going to show you how you can actually check the your cpu temperature and other temperatures if you notice that it rises about like 80 degrees celsius that's pretty much as high as you want it to get on your laptop because anything about that is actually reaching to your cpu temperature limit so let's go ahead and pull it apart right now and if you're new to the channel take a second to click that subscribe button also if you find this video helpful give it a like and smash the notification bell so you don't miss new videos. I appreciate you guys very much and let's go! To see the temperature reading from the sensors, I'm using the AIDA64 program and it shows you all the temperatures from the sensor and as you can see, even under no load at all, the temperature sits pretty high and this is due to the poor heat transfer from the CPU to the heatsink. So let's go ahead and see how it's going to perform under load and we're going to be using the Cinebench R23 for the CPU testing. Okay, so let's go ahead and start the Cinebench R23 testing program and we're going to be using the CPU multi-core test to apply the maximum load on the CPU to see how hot it's going to get. I won't be showing you the full process of testing it because it's taking over 15 minutes but as you can see that the maximum temperature the CPU has reached is 100 degrees Celsius which is basically the upper temperature limit for any CPUs and you don't want to have your laptop running at these temperatures. After the test has finished our CPU has scored 1042 points at the multi-core test and we're going to compare it to the test afterwards when we change the thermal paste. Before disassembling the laptop make sure you unplug it, shut down the operating system and get started. So for this job we're going to need some general toolkit with a screwdriver and we're also going to need the thermal paste. I just bought this RTX MX4 thermal paste. And we're also going to need the thermal pads. These are the one millimeter thick. There are also options available of half a millimeter and one and a half millimeter. So make sure when you disassemble it, you just measure it and see which ones you have there and install the same ones. Let's first unplug the mouth and Bluetooth USB adapters. This particular laptop has a pretty simple setup. All we're going to need is just a Phillips head screwdriver. And there's just going to be 11 Phillips head screws that we're going to need to take out to disassemble the back cover. So pretty straightforward. I'm just going to fast forward the footage so we can save some time. I'm going to show you a little life hack. If you can't get out the screw, you can use a small magnet and just apply it to the screwdriver. And it's going to magnetize the screwdriver and it will be a lot easier to pull out the screw that is stuck in the hole. Now let's go ahead and pull the back cover off and as you can see there is a compartment for the hard drive for the ram and for the wi-fi adapter this setup allows for a quick and easy upgrade from a hard drive to an ssd or just getting more ram installed in your laptop
And just a quick tip, computer memory of different generations have a notch in different spots, so you're not gonna mix it up, you can mix and match DDR4 with DDR3. So this is gonna be pretty simple, let's go ahead and take out both RAM sticks out. Pry it up with a plastic pry bar and you can take the whole keyboard off and as you can see there is a couple USB ports mounted on the side of this keyboard. This is gonna be our USB 2.0. Remove the ancient DVD drive, most new computers don't even have that and many people probably don't even know what it's for but this is used to be for reading DVD discs. There we go, so this is it, this is the motherboard for the laptop, the little tiny one and there is nothing left on the laptop except for the monitors. Yeah, we basically just got the bare bones, got it completely disassembled. Now let's go ahead and remove the heatsink. Some of the laptops don't have such a big heatsink because they don't have a dedicated GPU like this one does. When you have a dedicated GPU, you're gonna have an extra heatsink extending to the GPU as well as the CPU. So let's go ahead and remove this, there are 6 bolts and they're all marked, so you have to just go in the certain pattern and start with the number 6, go to the number 5 and so on, and when you're gonna be assembling it, you just gotta go in reverse order.
there we go this is our heatsink for the gpu and the cpu and as you can see the thermal paste is applied pretty messy and it's all over the place and this is how it was applied at the factory so hopefully we can do a better job next time we do it and the thermal pads are all wore out you can see how they are falling apart and they don't stick anymore and they're probably not transferring heat anymore as well so let's go ahead and remove all the residue of the thermal pads and clean up the messy thermal paste that we have there and then we're gonna put the new proper thermal paste on the cpu and gpu and also apply new thermal pads as well Clean all thermal paste from the radiator and the heatsink. In case you would like to change the processor, all you gotta do is just turn this lock over here from the lock position into the unlock position. And then you can pull up this, pull out this processor. So this is your processor chip that, it, that is installed on your laptop. And this one actually does look like an AMD processor, not like an Intel, because Intel usually has the this connector legs on the socket itself. AMD usually has it right on the chip, so yeah, this is kind of weird, but I guess that's what they have for the mobile processors. Yeah, this is how it looks. And this one is two core, four thread processor. Pretty good. Back then in 2012, it was a high performance processor. Wasn't the top of the line, but still, it's kind of nice and looks pretty nice. And then just carefully put it back in there to the lock position. Remove all thermal pads from the heatsink and as you see they look pretty old and they are not sticky anymore. What you can do, you can just take the old thermal pad and put it on top of the new one and then you can cut it out precisely to the same size. It's gonna give you some reference as what size you need and I find this works really good. Then make sure you peel off the protective plastic tape that's covering thermal pads because it's just to protect it and you want to make sure that you take it off and otherwise it's not going to transfer heat as efficient or it may not work at all. Alright, so now it's time to put new thermal paste and I'm using Arctic MX4. This is a really good thermal paste, it's got good thermal efficiency, so let's go ahead and put it on. Put the heatsink back on, make sure it's nice and flat against the surface of the processor. This way it's gonna make a good contact. And now it's time to put the screws back on and there's a certain pattern you gotta follow. You just gotta look at the numbers on the heatsink and it shows you which one you should put first. There are six screws so you just gotta follow the pattern, one, two, three, four, five, six. And don't torque them right away, just do them snug and then after you've done all six of them, then you can go ahead and torque them in the same pattern as you have installed them. Once the heatsink is back on and you have torqued all the screws, you can inspect and make sure there is no gaps between the chips on the motherboard and the heatsink. This way it's gonna transfer heat efficiently, so this is what you wanna achieve.
All right, so final touches. Let's go ahead and power on our laptop and see how it's gonna perform in the Cinebench benchmark test and see if we got any performance gain. And most important, if we're gonna be able to keep the temperatures down in this test. So after the test is done, we have gained 1,249 points, which is 207 points more than the previous results. So we have got quite an impressive improvement in performance. This is why it's so important to keep your system cool so you can get maximum performance out of your PC or your laptop. And during the second test with new thermal paste and new thermal pads, the temperature didn't go above 80 degrees, which is 20 degrees cooler than the previous test. And this is a big change. I'm really happy with the result. I gained more performance and my laptop is running much cooler. It's quieter. So hopefully this will help it run longer and it could still serve me a long time. I hope you guys find this video helpful and it's gonna help you to disassemble and change the thermal paste and thermal pads and answer some of your questions. If you still have any questions, please make sure you leave them in the comment section below. I'll be really happy to help you. And also, if you find this video helpful, please give it a like. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. I'm gonna have more videos coming to this channel, so make sure you click the notification bell so you don't miss new videos. And I hope you have a nice day and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.